our final new lecture of the semester is on press impressions. Um, after you complete this week's lecture and homework, we will work on an activity called putting it all together. And putting it all together is very like your final exam or exam number three. So make sure that you spend a lot of time understanding why we're putting it all together, how we're putting it all together, and how to come up with the right answer. But let's get started on press impressions. Um, we will calculate the length of time for a job based on how long it will run on the press. Our objectives for this lecture are to define what a press impression is, two, to use the number of sheets required to produce a job to calculate press time, and three, to use press time and a BHR or a budgeted hourly rate to calculate the cost for press time. So let's start off with what is a press impression. An impression occurs when ink is applied to a sheet of paper as it passes through a printing press. On the right hand side of your screen, I have drawn a diagram of what the interior of a printing press tower would be. In this example, this is only a one color printing press because there's only one ink well or one section for ink to be applied. If this was going to print in orange and purple, this whole section might be for the orange ink and there would be an entire section next to it for the purple ink. But every time a sheet of paper goes between the impression cylinder and the blanket cylinder, it creates an impression and ink is applied to the paper, and that's what defines an impression. However, um, when we calculate impressions for a printing press, we don't think about every single tower in the printing press. We only think of it as, did the sheet pass through the entire press or did it not pass through the press? I could go on for hours about how printing works. Uh, when we talk about printing, we most often talk about offset lithography printing. And that's like book or paper printing or sheets of paper. Um, there are many different types of printing processes. There's screen printing for t-shirts. Uh, there's flexography, you make stickers with that. Um, there is offset lithography, you make books. There's something called reviewer printing. There's, there's a bunch of different options. But the idea is the same, is that we layer colors one on top of each other to create the overall look. So I would like to watch a few videos on how printing works. Um, you can either watch along with me as I watch this video, or you could exit this video and if you download the slideshow you can just click on the video you'd like to watch. So the first video is going to explain how four color process printing works, that is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and those are the traditional printing process colors. Welcome to Module 1, a crash course in lithography. This module's goal is to communicate the essential concept of the printing process and technologies used today. The history of lithography printing spans more than two centuries. Lithography is a dominant printing process in the graphics art industry today and has been for over 30 years. The process can be used for a wide variety of products, from books to packaging to magazines and marketing materials. The primary reason for lithography's edge over other printing processes is that it produces the highest quality and sharpest images on a variety of substrates combined with the speed at which large volumes of printed work can be produced. Lithography is based on the principle that oil and water repel each other. On the printing plate, an oil-based ink is attracted to an image area while non-image areas accept water, thus the two areas remain distinct from one another. The lithography process is comprised of a series of rollers and cylinders. One set of rollers brings a water-based solution to the plate and another set brings an oil-based ink. The plate, which is wrapped around a cylinder, contacts the roller system. Water clings to the non-image areas of the plate, while the oily ink sticks to the image areas of the plate. The ink is then transferred to an intermediate cylinder called the blanket cylinder. The blanket cylinder is forced against the paper, thus transferring the image. Now that you see how ink is put on paper, let's explore how this process works to create the full range of colors like the photograph pictured. First, the image must be captured through three filters, red, green, and blue. The resulting image, like the one you see in this video, is an RGB image. This allows it to be displayed on your computer screen or other monitor. But this color format will not work for reproducing images on paper, because it requires light to be projected at you to create the different colors. So the next step is to use computer software to convert the image to CM, Y, and K, or cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. To convert the image from RGB to CMYK, we use image editing software that converts the artwork to the correct color space and color builds. 
The CMYK image or artwork is then sent to a raster image processor, or RIP, which separates the artwork into the four process colors. The CMYK is also referred to as process printing, or process colors. A plate is created for each separation. When the four colors are overprinted, they recreate a full color reproduction of our artwork. The printed piece is actually a combination of small dots that individually are invisible to the naked eye but the colors combine to create the illusion of a full color image. If you use a loop or a magnification device, you can see the individual dots that make up the image. But when you look at the image without magnification, it looks crisp, clean, and sharp. You can learn more about this process and how it works in our inks and colors module. Lithography covers a wide range of run lengths depending on the press type and size. The efficiency of the run is largely dependent on the choosing of the correct press and size. Presses are classified by the type of paper feed they use. There are two basic types of presses, web presses and sheet-fed presses. Web presses use rolls of paper rather than individual sheets. Web offset presses are beneficial in long printing jobs, typically press runs that exceed 100 to 200,000 pieces. Some web presses have the ability to print, but also to cut, perforate, and fold. Newspapers are printed on web presses. Sheet-fed presses use individual sheets of paper that are fed into the press one at a time. Because there are multiple sizes of sheet-fed presses, they can produce a wide range of run lengths efficiently from lows of 250 pieces into the millions. Sheet-fed presses are ideal for short to medium runs that require high quality and consistent color. Digital presses are also sheet-fed presses, but use toner instead of ink. Digital presses are best suited for short runs, less than 250 pieces, and shine when you, the output is highly variable. The per unit price is more expensive on a digital press. Press size is referred to in terms of sheet size. The most common is quarter, half, and full sheet, or 2-up, 4-up, or 8-up. Small presses are better suited for the short runs, and larger presses are better suited for longer runs. PFL primarily runs quarter sheet presses, so we can be efficient for a wide range of quantities between 250 pieces and 100,000 or more, depending on the format of the piece. Here's a short video of a sheet-fed press in action. After the paper is fed into the feeding system, it goes through a system of rollers and blankets where the ink is applied. First the black, then the cyan, magenta, and finally the yellow. And then a coating can be applied as well before it goes through a drying system to dry the piece and is delivered to the delivery. Thanks for completing module one and learning more about the lithography printing process. In the next module, we'll cover paper types and coatings.